Welcome to Coffee with a Risk Manager, where we share a cup of coffee with colleagues and discuss all things risk management in higher education. I'm Stacey Kroll, Managing Director for Gallagher's Higher Education Practice. And with me today is Heather Taylor, Assistant Vice President for Risk and Insurance at Grand Valley State University in Michigan. On this episode, Heather and I are going to be talking about something we've been talking about seemingly since the day we met, which is ways that we can organically build a risk-aware culture within institutions of higher education. So delighted to have you on this episode, Heather. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? And then um, the obligatory coffee mug reveal is a, a big part of this episode. So um, go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, Stacey. Um, my name is Heather Taylor. As you mentioned, I'm with Grand Valley State University. My coffee cup today is a tea cup. It's the kind of a little tea <laughs> bag right there, which is really fun. Very cute. <laughs> I've been with Grand Valley for about five years, and I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. Um, so in light of our conversation today, I have one of my favorite coffee mugs. I don't know if you can read it. It says a little risk management can save a lot of fan cleaning. Um, and I think that's what we're going to kind of scratch the surface with is um, that risk culture, how risk management is <clears throat> kind of uh, integrated throughout your institution. So you're an office of one. Mm -hmm. Um, which I think is also really important to know um, for audience. And then, so tell me a little bit about how and why you feel your risk culture is so important. So how did you execute it and kind of why is it so critical and on top of your mind? Yeah. So I think risk culture, especially being an office of one, has been really important in that it's a complete change from what I was hired to do five years ago. So when I was hired five years ago, the president at the time and the general counsel at the time and one of the board members at the time, all of whom have since retired, was very into enterprise risk management. And so I was hired to kick off ERM at Grand Valley and quickly learned what everybody tells you, which is you need senior leadership backing in order to make it work. And once all of your ERM fans start retiring, <laughs> Um, and then the other thing that I learned, because I did ERM previously with my manufacturing clients, is that for a for a D2 liberal arts public university, despite our size, we have usually approximately 20,000 students every year. Um, ERM just was not built into the culture here necessarily. So I tried and tried to make ERM work. I will try it again in a couple of years. We're just letting it simmer. We'll bring it back up someday. It's not gone forever. But when I realized that ERM was not going to be the culture of risk awareness, um, we pivoted and decided to just embed risk management, the culture and the concepts and the ethics of risk management everywhere we could to sort of decentralize and diversify it, if you will. Um, so instead of a centralized DRM process, we're now very decentralized to just pushing risk management and all the conversations. And we could talk a little bit about how we do that, like how we operationalize that, if you will. Um, if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, it sounds like you're on a grassroots effort, which I love. Um, so that kind of resonates. I think it'll resonate with a lot of our audience being an office of one kind of start stop of the ERM process. Um, so this gives us some ways to kind of embed that culture outside of that structure. Um, so tell me how you've accomplished that. Um, you feel pretty confident in your risk culture currently at Grand Valley. So how did you get to a point where you can represent Grand Valley's culture um, in a way that you feel comfortable with and have a sense of pride <clears throat> about? Perfect. So what I decided when we decided to take a little bit of a break on the ERM was what tools could I continue to use to drive risk management and risk assessment throughout the institution? And I just decided to go super back to the basics. Um, not every risk manager in higher ed, especially here in Michigan, not every risk manager is really grounded in insurance. A lot of risk management here in Michigan, the risk managers also manage EHS or also do something else. Um, but I am purely a risk manager with insurance procurement obligations. And I decided to start ground level and use insurance applications at the beginning it. of the conversation. So 
what I do is I never do an insurance application for any line of coverage on my own. Every single insurance application that I do, even if I know all the answers to it, I still ask and generally receive. I've, I've been very welcomed here in the institution. So I meet with the people whose lines of coverage are protecting their operations. And we go through the applications together, sometimes on Zoom where I'll, sh I'll share the screen. Sometimes we'll meet in person, but I do ask and almost everybody will meet with me and we will go through them. And one of the things that I do with the application is we talk about why the underwriters are asking these questions because that helps, context matters. Yeah. Yeah. Context matters. Exactly. Yep. And it helps them think through also what they're doing. Um, because sometimes an underwriter will ask a question and the person will be like, oh, okay, well, that's a great idea for me to implement in the future if I haven't already. And so it really just provides a super base level kind of conversation about what is risk management? How does insurance help you? That's the other conversation. It's important for you to meet with me because my job is to protect you and the institution and have all of the stakeholders on campus. And we'll use the insurance applications as an opportunity to kind of talk about that. Plus, it allows me to meet everybody. So um, it creates relationships where I might not meet somebody at all. But now I just, for example, um, with your cyber application, I've got a 23 page cyber application. So I probably speak to five or six IT people. And now my chief information security officer and I are best friends. We've been dealing with this application for the last four days, right? So the cyber app will do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I meet with the CISO, you know, in the morning on the cyber application, and then we've got public television. So I'll meet with our, our broadcasting people in the afternoon on our broadcaster's liability. And and so it's just, uh, I, I have found that, again, it seems so basic, but it's, it's a way to introduce yourself and it's a way to introduce this idea of risk management across the board. So how has that benefited you and your efforts of protecting the institution? So can you give some examples of how this partnership has benefited your operation over the last few years? Yeah. So again, if, if we're thinking about risk management as both an insurance procurement concept and also protecting the institution, um, a couple of concrete examples would be, um, we'll just take tomorrow. So tomorrow I've got seven um, insurance company engineers coming out to visit three of our campuses here in West Michigan. And two weeks ago, um, we met with underwriters. So the way that it works is I have to have a, a relationship with the people who run the facilities on all the campuses, as well as the people in planning, as well as the people in finance because I literally bring them with me to Chicago. I saw you in Chicago the other day, Stacey. Yep. <laughs> so I had two of my campus facilities people and one of my campus planning people. I brought them all out to Chicago. They were willing to spend three days in another state with me meeting insurance companies because they trust me and because I've been able to let them know why it's important. And some of the questions, again, like, Hey, before we go out there, can you send me all of the roofing warranties, et cetera, et cetera. So we get really, and then the, the bonus to that is they understand what I'm doing. They understand yes. the value of the information that they're giving to me. And it reflects really well on the institution as we're going through marketing, especially with like hard products. So the underwriters and the engineers will come away from this thinking, hey, Grand Valley put 10 people in front of us over the course of, you know, two days in two different states. And that just speaks to their commitment and it, it validates to them why they want to partner with us and have us be their insurance client. That's great. That's great. Um, so let's talk about something else that can impact these relationships. Turnover. So um, I, too, am a believer. Again, we've been talking about this for years. This is like a long relationship, but I, too, am a believer in this grassroots effort to build these relationships, build the institutional knowledge, embed the risk appetite through your campus partners, right? What happens when someone 
leaves. How do you manage turnover? How do you maintain that culture throughout kind of the fluidity that is higher ed administrative positions? Yeah. So that's been really interesting, too, because a lot of the time with higher ed, especially at an institution our size, something might somebody, an important role might turn over and you don't realize it until after it's happened. That was particularly true during COVID when we weren't seeing each other on campus all the time. And so one of the things that I try to do is, again, if you can maintain the relationships that you started during the marketing application process, and if you can maintain those relationships over the course of a year, I will often grab coffee with a couple of people in any given department, maybe on a quarterly basis. And so when there's turnover, um, as soon as you find out about it, I reach out to those people and I say, um, hey, I introduce myself. I say, you know, you may or may not have had a relationship with your risk manager at your former institution. I am not here to say no to you. And so we kind of talk about the role of risk management. And then I literally buy them coffee. I talk about Great. what their goals and strategies are. And a lot of times people will, I've, I've been here for five years, which I suppose is a long time. But prior to COVID, people were at this institution since the 60s. Like people were happily here for 20 plus years. And so it's nice now too, because people think about me and when they have questions, they'll reach out. And it may be, I've only met them once for coffee, but they'll reach out. And so um, that really helps with the turnover. It's just, I, I make myself available to them. And I let them know why their position is important to me. It's so important. just as an example, last week, I met with a new person in our provost office, a new person in our conduct office, and I've been working really closely with a new person who's our head athletic trainer. And um, the athletic trainer was saying that she was at a, at a, um, like a, a meeting for athletic trainers. And um, she was saying a lot of them don't have any relationship with their risk managers. And so my whole idea is, especially even if I didn't have a relationship with that role prior to the turnover, anytime there's a new person, it's a great opportunity for me to reach out and buy them coffee and just let them know what's going on. Yeah, I I used to calendar it uh, 60 days in my prior role as a practitioner, which I've been out of that for about two years. Um, but one of the things I used to do was calendar 60 days after one of those key campus stakeholders started, I would introduce myself then and have like, I would, they would know who I was before then, but then really at that 60 day mark, all right, now's the time for us to sit down. I'm going to tell you what I do, how I do it, what our philosophy is. They've had enough to absorb kind of that onboarding orientation And generally about 60 days, depending on the stakeholder, they're going to have questions about how things are done and how certain risks are managed. So that conversation, that cup of coffee ends up being um, very beneficial. And it gives you an opportunity to add value right at the start of that, because you now hold that institutional knowledge. So you're you're the keeper of information that they desperately need to be able to do their job in an effective way. Um, so I love that strategy of just kind of, and again, keeping it casual over coffee is always just an awesome way to engage with people um, and really develop a relationship. So before we close, any unrealized benefits of these partnerships that you weren't anticipating? Um, you spoke about kind of the meaning behind it. Anything that kind of surprised you as you've kind of been embedding this culture throughout GDSU? Yeah, one of the things that surprised me was um, people, at least at Grand Valley, and I always joke, I, I always say, is this a Grand Valley thing or a higher ed thing? Because again, <laughs> this is the only institution I've worked at, and I didn't have higher ed as clients before. So it's really funny because a lot of people, the answer can vary, but I think that this is kind of a bit of a higher ed thing. Um, people are very eager to communicate with me the fact that they are already risk aware. And it's really exciting and interesting to me because I'm not coming in like, hey, here's how you handle risk management. It's much more of a conversation. And and the surprising thing to me is um, 
risk awareness. I always say I'm not risk averse. I'm risk aware. And I think that we want the institution to be the same way. You can't be a growing and exciting institution and be completely risk averse, but you have to be risk aware. And so what's been really surprising to me is both learning about the complexity of the institution, just purely the complexity. Anyone in higher ed knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I think anyone outside of higher ed has no idea of what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> um, but just the idea that when I introduce myself, people are really eager to have conversations that are past the insurance to tell me about what they're already doing from a risk management standpoint, to tell me about the procedures and the processes that they're doing that they're proud of, that maybe we can implement in a centralized manner. And so I think, and, and again, that allows me to be able to communicate to other people about how, what a great job we're doing. And so I think that's been the surprise is that the risk aware culture pre-exists, at least here, any work that I can do, what I can do is just amplify the value of that and help people in their decision making, make sure that we're making ethical decisions. And so that's been the real surprise and pleasure to me. That's awesome. Um, and certainly speaks to that risk culture predating your joining the institution, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you're right. More, most stakeholders, a vast majority of higher education stakeholders, they're in it for the mission. They're in it for protection of the mission. And risk management is protection of your institutional mission. So it makes sense that these people are so excited to share their story. And it allows you to share their story um, to insurance partners or to brokers or to external parties um, or the board of trustees, right? Depending on your reporting structure, it allows you to articulate their message effectively. So um, I, I'm not that surprised. You may have been that surprised. I'm not surprised, but um, my higher ed time predates you. <laughs> so your higher ed time. So I guess that's Yeah, I will promise you that the <laughs> facility managers for my manufacturing companies do not want to talk to their risk managers. <laughs> <laughs> the way that one of the reasons <laughs> one of the reasons why we love working in higher ed, Heather, <laughs> right? So, um, thank you so much for being on this episode, and um, have a great thank day. You, you too. Cheers. It was great to see you. Oh, cheers. Yeah. <laughs>